Now, then the final question, and again, it's all about the language, isn't it? Part C, find the probability that Pat eventually wins. Eventually. Um, we don't usually see words like that in questions like this. Eventually. Is there some kind of area of mathematics that we know about when you know, you're adding numbers together? And you can't say the first or the second or the third or the fourth. Eventually means you do all of them. Have we ever had any experience with topics that help us add up a long series of items that after series of items that's season sequences, right? Too much of a giveaway. So I need to form the series here to work out the probability of Pat eventually winning. Pat eventually wins. This is the probability of him winning on the first or the second or the third, or the fourth, or any of those times that he actually rolls the dice. Does this make sense? Now, I've already started to form this series, haven't I? I've got these two here. Uh, what am I going to put here? I'm actually going to write it like so. There's the first and the second. Now, what would happen, I don't really want to keep on drawing the rest of the probability tree, and I think I can work it out because of the pattern I've established. What will have to happen for him to win, not on his first or second, but on his third Roll. What will have to happen after, for example, Chad losing? If, if I want him to win on his, not his second, but his third roll, what happens here? Pat will have to lose again. Then Chad will have to lose again. And then finally Pat wins. That's his third attempt, right? So here's those two losses, but I want to do them a couple more times, right? So instead of that squared, I'm going to have that to the power of four, right? It's an even number because it has to, Chad has to lose and then Pat has to, sorry, Pat has to lose, then Chad has to lose and then it comes back to him. And then finally it ends on a 1 out of 36. What does that represent? Well, the 1 out of 36 always represents the actual completion of the game. He wins, right? Um, but this will keep on going forever. Okay, now, whoopsie daisy. Now, this is a series that gets smaller and each term successfully gets smaller and smaller and smaller and it gets small fast enough to have what's it called when this whole thing approaches something. It has a limiting sum, right? What is the formula for a limiting sum? It's a really simple one. Hopefully you remember it. It's a fraction, yeah. A? What's A? What's A, what's a in this case? It's this guy here. So I'm just going to write that. And then I think I heard you say the denominator has... 1 minus R. 1 minus... Mm, what's R in this case? 35 on 36 squared. Yeah, you've got to do it twice, don't you? And then you can see it goes twice. The next one will be 35 on 36 to the 6. So this looks a little gross. There you go. Can you give me a fraction? Can you work that out? You got there? Yeah, it's 51%. Uh, okay. 50% chance of eventually. <laughs> well, okay, so I think you should, and your calculator can make mincemeat of this awkward looking fraction. You should get 36 on 71. Now I'm going to ask the question one more time. Can someone give that to me as a decimal? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. Can you give me a few more? 0. <laughs> Zero, four, two, 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 dot, 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 dot. Okay, great. So, I want us to do two things here. Number one, I want to notice, what makes this question curly? Why is this in the HSC? Well, one of the, it sounds terrible, but one of the great things that you can finally do at the HSC is take all this knowledge you develop in a whole bunch of different places, like, say, probability and series and sequences. And now that at this final point, we can say, oh, you're meant to know all of this. We can actually combine it in interesting ways, right? I know that makes it harder, but it also makes it more interesting. You learn something. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, all the way through, I've been trying to get you to sense check here, right? It turns out fractions like this and this are pretty awful at doing sense checks when it comes to probability. But if you put them into a percentage or a decimal, they're a little bit easier to read. Um, this is just above half. Isn't it? It's just above half. So it's, he, Pat has better than even odds, but it's very close to even. Why does he have slightly better than even odds? He starts first. He starts first. So he gets a slight leg up into the situation, right? But then you should expect it to go towards half. Why would you expect it to go towards half? Pat and Chad, right? What must they do to win? 
They must roll two sixes. In other words, they have to do the same thing to win, right? Winning means the same thing for both of them. They've got to achieve the same goal. So you'd expect both the probabilities to get quite close to each other because they have to do the same thing to win. Does that make sense? Um, whereas if we skewed the game one way or another, or if there was a weighted die or something like that, that's when it would change. Okay. So probability trees, you're kind of, I mean, to create this part here, which is sort of what the real question is about, it's pretty difficult to try and string this together without having at least a simple diagram to understand where those probabilities come from. So that's why they can be useful. Okay.